So in my lab, there are several times where you're going to um, have to both make a standard curve. And then there are times where you're going to need to use the standard curve to solve for unknown concentrations. And this is going to be done, uh, especially during a protein lab, where you're going to have to solve for the concentration of unknowns. And then uh, a lot more so in a major um, enzyme laboratory uh, with dopachrome, where you're going to have to solve then for unknown concentrations. So you could use that to do another calculation to find rates of reaction. So it's a lot of calculating. And if you don't know how to do it, um, then you're really going to be stuck. So you're going to either have your own data set or data sets that I provide for you uh, in the website um, for class. Uh, and you're going to use those to first make your standard curve. So you should have already done that, just made a standard curve, got the equation for the line um, from just our standard um, lab on crystal violet, just dilution, serial dilutions, and then, and then making the curve. So your curve would look like this. The way we plot it is we put uh, concentration on the y-axis, absorbance on the x. In regression analysis, you would have um, the variables flipped on opposite axes. But because of the reason where we're doing this is we already know that there is a relationship between the two because of Beer's law. The absorbance, as it increases, or as concentration increases, absorbance will also increase. All right. So we know this. We're not, we're not uh, necessarily testing it. Um, as part of our objective. What we're trying to do is use the standard curve to solve for the concentrations of unknown. The way we do that is we get the equation for the line. All right, so you would have to input this into a data into a graphing program, set it up properly, you get the graph, you tell it to give you the equation, you can have it give you an R square value as well, uh, and see what that is, you know, usually it's 0.9 something. Let's just say it's a 961, something like that. It's usually pretty good, pretty close to one. Um, it should be, unless your data is really off. Now, then you have this equation, which we could use. So in this case, the um, Y stands for our absorbance. Sorry, the Y stands for the concentration. It's here on the axis. So that means concentration equals, if we write it in this way, if we, we set it up. Um, in this case, it's a uh, 0, 6, 1. This is just a random example I just came up with. X stands for the absorbance. Okay, so absorbance is on the x-axis minus 0 0.05. Okay, so this is sort of the, the equation that's set up. And so then what you would do is simply, you would say, okay, um, I have an unknown. Uh, and I put it in here. This is, I, I get my cuvette. So, you know, you have a, you have a cuvette with your unknown sample in it. You would blank the machine with the same thing that you used to do your standard curve. And then you could take that uh, absorbance and then you read it in the spectrophotometer. And that would have to be done at the exact same wavelength with the exact same blank. So all these things have to be the same. But then you would get some value. And now for that particular solution, you're, you're like, your question is, what is the concentration of the solution? Well, you say, I don't know the concentration, but I can figure out the absorbance of it. I could take it, put it in a spectrophotometer. It'll read how much light can pass through it or how much light's absorbed by it. You get that reading of absorbance. And now you can use that to figure out the concentration if you have this equation, right? Because you can put in an absorbance here, and then you can find a concentration. So in this particular example, let's say, you know, we would say concentration equals um, 0 0.61. And now this is the absorbance of my unknown um, 0.73. And in this equation, it is instead of plus B, it could be plus or minus. What that number represents is the Y intercepts. So when this line is drawn, and it hits the Y axis, this point here is zero. So technically, we don't show it. But you know, this line coming down, and this line would be coming over. And so these are the positive values. And these would be the negative values going down, you know, in this direction, same thing here, this is positive in that direction, negative in this direction. So if it intercepts the y axis above zero, it would be plus. But if it happens to intercept the y axis below zero down here, it would be minus. So it really doesn't matter. You didn't do it wrong if you get a minus sign. You know, it, it's it's just fine. 
Um, so in this particular one, let's just say it is, you know, minus um, 0 0.05, okay? And that would be it. And then you would solve, um, I don't think I have it solved and, and I don't have my uh, uh, calculator right here to do this. Um, but simply you just multiply these two numbers together, subtract this particular number, and then the concentration that you get uh, for it that is the concentration of your unknown. You just simply plug in the numbers on the calculator, solve it, and that's it. So that's all you really have to do. So if you know how to make the standard curve, which you should, to solve for the unknown is very simple. All you have to do is take the equation and then you just plug in absorbance for x. So you put the absorbance for the unknown solution in here, solve it, and then you get the concentration there. Uh, and that's it. Uh, and that, that would be the, um, the way to do it. And if you had multiple unknown solutions, you just solve it multiple times. You use the same exact equation. You just put in different values for x each time, and then you get a different number each time that you solve it. And those are the concentrations that you would solve for uh, for those unknowns. Right. So it should be very, very straightforward.